The idea behind the show is simply asking guests what they would tell a stranger on a plane if they were sitting next to them and the stranger asked them for advice. The scenery is passing very fast, but the seer is constant. The one who's seeing is the same. Let me appreciate you for asking a question that I haven't been asked after 2,500 or so uh, interviews over the years. Uh, you have to drop the EGO, which is everyone's greatest obstacle. In 2008, Grant and I had been married for four years. I was pregnant with my first child. Um, we were, the economy was collapsing and we were on the verge of losing everything financially. So it's so great to be here with another new episode of the show. Uh, so excited to have Stacey Lynn with us. And uh, this is our first time interviewing Stacey Lynn. And this show here where we don't have as much extra time like my other show where we might have 45 minutes for an interview. Uh, I usually only have time for a few questions. So I try to jump kind of right in. And so Stacey Lynn, having said all that, where I'd like to start is maybe I'll call it an easier question. Probably it's just more along the lines of, I don't know if you're a reader or not, but if you are, I'm curious if you have had a book that has made a lasting impact on you. And if so, can you share with us what the book is and why? Mm. I would have to say the book that comes to mind is St. Faustina's Diary. Okay. I read back in 2013. And I believe that that was the beginning of my deeper spiritual journey because it connected me more fully to Christ consciousness, mm -hmm. like beyond going to church and um, reading the Bible. When I was reading St. Faustina's diary, um, she actually had conversations with Jesus and um, he downloaded to her that picture, like trust in me where the water and the blood is coming out of his side. And um, yeah, it was just how powerfully he interacted with her in her life. Mm -hmm. And just reading through those pages, it took me an entire year because it was the tiniest print with that really thin paper that you would find normally in a Bible. Yeah. Um, but as I was reading the pages and I was reading the story, I was literally being transformed on a spiritual level to the awakening that there is something more um, beyond what I'm just being taught at church or beyond what I'm reading. So that's not the full picture, right? So... Yeah, so that was, and then I started to open my eyes to um, like Wayne Dyer and his teachings and the book Conversations with God and, you know, yeah, so amazing. So I have to say that's the one that, yeah, I when I talk about it now, it still just touches my heart because, I don't know, it just solidified that connection with, with Christ consciousness and love, unconditional love and love being the gateway. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you uh, what may or may not be a bigger question, but it's just simply a question that I've asked many times that I call the time machine question. And it's kind of how it sounds. It's basically just the question of if you could jump into a time machine and go back and talk to a younger Stacy, give her some life advice based on what you've learned in the year since. What do you think you might tell younger Stacy? Mm -hmm. I would tell younger Stacy that, um, what she has to share with the world is of value and to not hide her light for the sake of others. And it's okay to give, but be mindful of overgiving as a means of looking for acceptance because acceptance comes from within. Everything starts with self-love and it's not being selfish. We can't truly be there for other people if we have not learned to love all aspects of ourselves first. So that is what I would tell my younger Stacy, because she was oh. a survivor. She was resilient. She was one who would push things aside so that she could carry on and she would compartmentalize and she would overgive and overgive um, to be accepted by others. Yeah. yeah. So how about... 
And this might be a big question. I should give you a couple of seconds to think about this one after I ask it. But uh, I would love to ask you, and the reason I say that part is because I think it's sometimes hard for us to think quickly about what was the one that stood out. But I would love to get your take on, you can pick which one or both, uh, best advice, worst advice that you've ever been given. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll start with the best advice because I think that's easier. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay. Um, the best advice that I have ever been given is to stop looking out here for the answers mm. and learn to look within because that's where you're going to find peace. That's where you're going to find truth. And that's where you're going to be able to stand in your own authenticity. Um, the worst advice I've ever been given is fake it till you make it. <laughs> that is not authenticity to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think people can see through that. I think if you come to the table and you admit that you don't know everything, but you're learning and you're willing to share the wisdom that you've gained and you've embodied on your journey to date, then people respond more positively to that. I love that because I did a talk not that long ago on our Blue Talk stage called Living the Unfiltered Life about this idea that um, a lot of people try to fake that there's something that they're not. And not even just like, you know, we hear fake it till you make it. And it's almost like, um, you know, if you're not there yet, just kind of try to pretend you're there so you get there. But it goes one step further, I think, whenever the person faking it is misleading somebody else to sign with them or work with them, if that makes sense. Because like, if you're faking it, but you're also like, as an example, and I won't out anybody by saying this, but there's somebody in my network that their whole thing is wealth built a creation. And uh, I'm going to show you how to earn this many streams of revenue and all that stuff. And then we're putting on a boot camp, and it's $97. And they're like, Oh, you know, I don't have that in my budget right now. Um, because I spent on this one thing. Um, so maybe I can catch it next year. And they said, unless you can let me pay it over three payments, and we're talking $100. But they're on their page is saying wealth creation. I work only with millionaires, CEOs. It seems strange to me or inauthentic that there's a struggle for $100 if you're helping people create wealth. So to me, that's right. an example of is this person trying to fake it to everybody else? And then for whatever reason, opening up to me and telling me that. Uh, but I think that's where it gets to be on inauthentic. If it's, it's one thing to me, if you're... Um, trying to build a business and you're, you know, trying to uh, tell yourself, I can do this part, I can do this part. But to me, it's another thing if you're coaching somebody by faking that you're doing something you're not. So anyway, that was just a little right. slide. No, I totally believe you're on. totally right. I believe that you're totally right. You're bang on there. Um, because it's about walking your talk, right? Walking your talk. And I've taken a long time to slowly build my business and because I believe that I need to be able to overcome the pain points in my life and embody the healing practices that I've used before I can go and teach other people how to do that. Mm. So, and I'm okay with taking time because then I know that I'm standing on a very strong foundation, right? And I'm standing with integrity and authenticity in what I do. So, I mean, it can be a little frustrating when you're, when things are, are slow moving like that, but there's a purpose for that. And I think um, healers like myself uh, and coaches like myself stand out in that regard. People know, people watch your journey. You know, they watch it through social media. They watch it through your, your personal network and, and they can see the authenticity of, of your message because they've seen what you've gone through and what you've overcome. Yeah. So agree. So let me ask you the main question uh, that's sort of inspired the show, because this show was inspired by a book that I wrote called The Enlightened Passenger, about two people on a plane, one person giving the other person advice. And so that's what triggered the idea behind the show, because I thought, what if I could bring people on the show and ask them what they would tell Mr. or Mrs. Stranger on a plane? And so I'll ask you, Stacey Lynn, if you're sitting next to a stranger on a plane and they, whether they knew you or not, they asked you for advice. Um, based on what you've learned in the last number of years, what advice do you think you would give them 
Um, and assuming it's different than the advice you would give a younger Stacey Lynn. I'm thinking probably with a stranger, the advice might be different than what you give yourself. So um, what do you think you might tell uh, that stranger on a plane? Hmm. I think I might tell that stranger on a plane that you are more than what you think you are. <clears throat> that you are the embodiment of light, that you are the embodiment of the creator. You're born of the creator, therefore the creator is in you and you are in the creator. And with that comes a whole new level of possibility. Energetically, I find um, we always spend so much time trying to heal the physical, trying to make things happen in the physical. And we deal with things in such a linear fashion that we forget that we are energetic beings. We are spiritual beings, right? We're energetic, having a physical experience. And we have access to this higher light consciousness, which lives within us. And all we have to do is to still ourselves and get quiet and call it in and let it flow down and then just anchor it in to whatever it is we're trying to achieve. And I can speak from experience with that. And so I don't do anything without calling in uh, my higher light consciousness, without working directly with the creator himself. And then I wait. I don't sit down and say, oh, I'm going to write a book today or I'm going to write that chapter for Blue Talks. I go into meditation first and I connect in to my higher Christ self, my high heart. I connect into the creator consciousness of pure unconditional love, Corey, enlightenment and transcendence. And I ask, what is the message that you would have me give? What is the message that you want me to put out to the world? Because then I know that I am serving the greatest good. And I have so much support beyond this physical realm when I do that, that I cannot fail mm. because I just like, I'm just being uplifted on so many other levels and I can move forward with passion and purpose in what I do. So that's what I would share with them. Cause I feel like a lot of people are still sleeping and they don't have that remembrance of the divine light within them and their purpose for being here. And everybody has a purpose and everybody has something special that they have to offer this world. And it's not a competition. I can't offer what you offer, you can't offer what I offer and we're all made better for it. So the more that we can help um, extend that hand or extend that little spark to activate, to awaken those around us, so that they can raise their vibration, they can raise their level of consciousness and live in a higher state of being, the better that we're all gonna be, um, humanity as a whole. So I know it's very esoteric, no, <laughs> but I, that's I, who I am. <laughs> I love that. So Stacey Lynn, um, as you know, there's never enough time. I mean, I believe we covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time, but there's never enough time. So with your permission, first of all, I'll call it a to be continued. And okay. maybe at some point we should bring you on to our other show where we have a little bit more time. Uh, but the second thing is, uh, I want to ask you, obviously, very important before we let you run, for those that just heard this amazing message for you from you, um, maybe want to reach out to learn more about what you're doing, your work, working with you, all that kind of good stuff. Is there a place where you would send them? Like, is there a main hub or is there a place where you'd send people? Um, two, two places, actually. So you can reach out to me on Facebook, uh, Stacy uh, Stacy Corlett. It's not under Stacy Lynn Corlett. I haven't changed that yet. So Stacy Lynn is my professional name yeah. um, because it's my uh, true first name. Yeah. And or they can reach out to me on my website, which is www.soulful.com wellness solutions.com. 